discipline problem students. Mm -hmm. Now, black and brown students, and I've seen the statistics on this, they usually have a higher occurrence of being targeted. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we've heard the phrases driving while black, exactly. walking while black, walking while brown, driving while brown, etc. So please, I want you to explain that a little bit more. And, and the statistics I've seen have showed there's higher incarceration rates for youth, troubled youth. Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, the solution for any time where, you know, issues arise with a student has been to subject them to really authoritarian leaders and authoritarian environment. And what better place to have that than, to, than a class that's run by military officers that have that sense of discipline and structure and command and commandism well let me ask and ask it another way um, and and the question is I, I understand the, the 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 discipline part but what I I don't understand is are they doing it to fill numbers yes it's actually also been being done for administrative purposes I believe Dan Dan Kelly the former president of the school board has actually stated that um, principals like JROT, JROTC, more for, for more for administrative purposes rather than any merits of the program itself. Well, some of it is that they don't have enough PE teachers, so it's putting students in the program. But in terms of the money, and Marco alluded to this earlier, said it earlier, is that this is not a freebie from the Pentagon. The city is paying a million dollars for the program, and one thing that's kind of interesting is. Last year, there were about 1,500 students in the program for our million dollars. This year, because there's no physical education credit, we're down to 500 students. That's a third, but we're still paying the million dollars. So it's an exorbitant cost. Doesn't San Francisco have a budget deficit? Yes, we are paying for this rather than buying pencils. Well put, well put. Uh, there are some things that don't make sense, but um, uh, you know we'll we'll continue going through this. Uh, I, I read an article or some information that uh, you had. Uh, somebody went through a public records um, uh, request to the San Francisco Unified School District. And the district indicated they do not keep records on how many students add up end up in the military after high school? Right. How do you monitor a program? How do you, you uh, this doesn't make any sense. This sounds like uh, either smoke and mirrors or it sounds like somebody's trying to hide some facts. And in these days of budgetary concerns, et cetera, you know, 500 students for a million dollars out of San Francisco budget and you've got a budget shortfall in San Francisco, that doesn't sound like a wise program. It also doesn't sound like a wise program if some of these youth are winding up from low income and minority communities, winding up in the front lines, okay, while it's not in private schools, it's not, and a lot of white students are not enrolled in the program. There, there's a little unfairness here, so let's continue. Uh, in terms of the, the uh, Public Records Request Act that you're referring to, that was to dispel the myth that is being stated as fact that there's just a very small percentage of San Francisco graduates who go into the military. You're right, the district does not track. Um, basically, the, there's a gap period of about five years after graduation, which is when a lot of the youth join. And so the district only tracks those that join immediately after graduation. The only ones who would really know who joins eventually is the Department of Defense. And they put the national figure at 40 to 45 percent. So basically what's happening is, again, they're targeting youth of color, um, who they're defining as all at risk and putting them in this program, and then many of them, because apparently a lot of the instructors locally say this is not the time to join the military because it's so clear that they would go on the front lines. Um, so they're trained in this program, and then they go out into the world, and there are no economic opportunities. So after a year or two or three of trying to pay the bills, 
that's when a lot of them end up in the military um, by enlisting because there aren't any other options. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's kind of a, um, amazing when I uh, study some of your uh, information and literature on the, on the subject. Um, uh, I think the youth have to be protected. If it was in a time of crisis and it was a legitimate war, maybe it would be considered different where people are defending the homeland of the country. But when you have things, and I repeat, like Guantanamo, you have uh, torture included in, in, in the military, and we're in a place that we shouldn't be looking for Al-Qaeda. Uh, there's something wrong here. So, you know, let's, let's use that as a, a, a base. Because um, uh, if bin Laden's in Iraq, then um, he's got a great hiding place. And, you know, it's, of course, bigger than bin Laden because after 9-11 it was said this is an endless war on terror that will not end in our lifetime. That's what, you know, our foreign policy has been. And the government knows that they really need to avoid the draft at all cost because instituting the draft would bring about a stronger anti-war movement and anti-draft movement. So Jay Razzi is this end run around the draft as we see it. Okay, you brought up an interesting point. Avoiding the draft. Let's take it from there. Who's supporting this thing? Who's, who is supporting the JROTC? Okay. Um, as we often say, follow the money. So in terms of this initiative, and let me just back up one, one second, if we could. So again, November 06 is when the board voted to get rid of the program and then extended it for a year. It's scheduled to end next June. And it could have stayed that way. And then the, the, the pro-military forces decided to put it on the ballot this November as advisory. So we did not take it to the ballot, but we, needless to say, need to defeat their efforts to continue the program. So we just got the um, printout of where their money has been coming from, and it's good to follow the money. I, before you do that, I, I want to load it up in a certain way. If any of these individuals have kids or family members, do you think they have their kids in the JROTC? Well, the interesting thing about this list is um, a lot of the, the the larger donors are not even individuals. Well, there's one individual in it. Okay, so let's let's go. Um, so, about seventy five percent of the donor donations of the eighty five eighty five thousand dollar total donations come from the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Plan C, which is a downtown, which is a business oriented political action committee, PG and E and the San Francisco Association of Realtors. And lastly, Donald Fisher, the founder of Gap, the clothing company mm -hmm. that uses child labor. So that's ironic that they're commenting on education-related um, propositions. Sure. And so, oh, so of that, 20,500 20, is from the Chamber of Commerce, 20,000 is from Donald Fisher from the Gap, 10,000 is from Plan, Plan C, and 7,500 is from PG&E, and 7,499 is from the San Francisco Association of Realtors. I think it's really important to put emphasis on the fact that the Chamber of Commerce and the Association of Realtors donated, you know, altogether around twenty-eight thousand dollars, and that this the JROTC program has been touted as something that benefits disenfranchised communities. If you come to these communities and ask them what are their main um, concerns in living in San Francisco, it would be affordable housing, a decent paying job, and the two, one of the two uh, main funders of Proposition V have consistently lobbied against affordable housing, have consistently lobbied against the, the gains made by organized labor in the city. So, you know, I, the challenge I offer is to um, the, the, the supporters of Proposition V and the people who put in the ballot, if you're really concerned about benefiting disenfranchised communities, 